Just one game to go in the regular season means just one game to go until we learn the ultimate fate of Farhan Zaidi and the Giants have the chance to do the most appropriate thing ever again. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspek, and on the show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 20. 20- 15, been hosting this show for over five years, and I'm a lifelong Giants fan. Thank you for making Lockdown Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. So check us out there if you have not already, and please hit that subscribe button wherever it is that you're following the show. This episode is brought to you by Booking.com, Booking.com, Booking. Yeah, the right stay can make you a fan of any city, even your baseball rivals. Book today on Booking.com, the official accommodation partner of Major League Baseball. Get the Booking.com app today. And coming up on today's show, we are going to discuss the fact that this is uh, we're, we're hours away, potentially, from learning the fate of Farhan Zaidi, whose status is very much up in the air and has kind of dominated the headlines ever since... Andrew Baggerly of The Athletic reported that the Giants ownership group, specifically, you know, the board and Buster Posey kind of went, he said like the words that they were, quote, so frustrated, end quote, about the lack of immediate traction between Zaidi and Scott Boris on a Matt Chapman extension that they basically went over his head and stepped in and got the deal across the finish line. But... Then there was a conflicting report that came out literally the next day from the San Francisco Chronicle, both John Shea and Susan Slusser contributing to that story that basically kind of uh, said, hey, not so fast from sources, you know, with with each, you know, of the of the athletic and the Chronicle, of course, citing sources there. But they've got some different sources saying some different things because the Chronicle uh, reported that you know, first of all, they talked to Scott Boris, Matt Chapman's agent, which The Athletic and Andrew Baggerly apparently did not even reach out for Boris for that story, which does feel like he should have been uh, at least asked to comment on the story, given that it involved him, because he, he, a Chapman extension doesn't get finalized without the agent for Chapman. But I guess Baggerly was that confident in his sources that he went ahead anyway. I'm, I'd like to know the reasoning behind not talking to Scott Boris. But anyway, the Chronicle did talk to Scott Boris, who said any report, first of all, he was unhappy with the reporting and wished that he had been contacted and said, look, Farhan was in and out of the hospital while we negotiated this deal. And any report that says he and I didn't like negotiate the deal is false. And so I think that that means a lot um, in terms of, you know, I believe him. He has no reason to really say anything to the contrary. And so the status of Farhan Zaidi, much like the status of the Giants, kind of 50-50, right? Like that's kind of how I feel is that I'm not sure how it's going to go. And you can let me know on YouTube in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, we're gonna know soon. That's the thing. It's like we're we're at the point where, you know, that there are, there is this doubleheader on Monday in Major League Baseball, and so it's possible the Giants don't want to, you know, make huge headlines ahead of you know such a pivotal probably day in baseball on Monday. But I don't know. I mean, you could just have the Giants come out and. Uh, release that one way or another they're going to say something is my kind of feeling and understanding about this based on the reporting because um, there was something else that came out where they made it sound oh I think it was Baggerly yeah reported again 
on this topic and said that all indications are that the board has made its decision. And he reported, you know, because Farhan Zaidi met with the media, this is what it was, that um, and, and acknowledged that his status was unknown uh, to him. He said that, um, you know, he, his job is to kind of analyze everything in his purview and the board's job is to analyze everything under his purview and him. And so he acknowledged, and then he said that they hadn't talked to him about his status and he hadn't asked either. Uh, so it was like business as usual. And uh, Baggerly said all, all indications are that the board has reached its decision and that they would kind of make a statement about the direction and future of the team following the season. And so I've kind of speculated that why would they not just give him the peace of mind by telling him your job is safe, we're bringing you back next year, which is the last year of his guaranteed contract. They do have like a team option for the following year. But why would they not just come out and tell him, hey, you're like amidst all this reporting that he could be fired, basically that, hey, you're not going to be fired if he's not going to be fired. So that's the strongest evidence that there is that he could be. Um, slash might be slash will be I don't know Um, whereas I also then started to think well if they were going to fire him it's kind of cruel to just make him sit there and sweat this out without telling him when you've got reports saying that he could be gone or the you know the reports were more like about the Chapman extension and of course Zaidi and ownership knows exactly what went down with the Chapman extension and so hopefully they're you know they're talking it it would be weird if they're just kind of having these conversations totally behind his back and coming to decisions and then not telling him so that is a little strange and and this is kind of quite the nail biter scenario and if like I kind of wanted to come on here today and make a prediction and I I just truly don't know what they're going to do. I think you can make a case either way. I think you can make the case that <clears throat> anybody else that you bring in, I'm not sure, entirely sure what kind of difference you think that they would make like during an off season, you know, because we're going into an off season and the Giants, they've been pretty good at, you know, Farhan Zaidi. Uh, they had by all accounts a good off season last year. And so you know, the years when they weren't as active, we do kind of have solid reason to believe this was ownership being a little bit tight financially post COVID. Zaidi has been allowed to kind of speak on that a little bit. He said, look, the economic conditions were not great. We, we were attendance was down. Um, you know, they, they didn't have anybody in the stands in 2020, of course, which is going to hurt your income uh, or revenue. And so they they had that miracle 107 win season, and then they like didn't do anything that off season basically, except let Kevin Gosman walk, and uh, they did bring in Carlos Rodon, uh, but on the offensive side it was like just Jock Peterson, and they fell back to a 500 record. But then they've gone out there and they've got some pretty good players, especially last off season. They got Blake Snell, who who's been the best pitcher in baseball for the last few months of the season they got Matt Chapman who's who's who was one of the better pickups of the of the offseason they did he did get an extension done um and their needs are you know they obviously need to improve but it's like their roster's kind of filled out in a way um outside of a few spots so it's kind of like you know young players have taken some roles here with Elliot Ramos and Tyler Fitzgerald and some of the other intriguing young guys like Casey Schmidt has finished the year strong. I do want to talk about him. The young pitching Landon Roop, who didn't have a great last outing. Tristan Beck, who made the start today. Um, I feel like they're going to pr- uh, pretty strongly go after like a Willie Adamas and probably make a pursuit, a run at Juan Soto, but probably fall short in that category as well. Uh, but... I'm just I'm just not sure what exactly can be done. It's more like a drafting and developing thing. I think that that's if anything like just fit the failure the failures that they've had 
you can't really just build a great team through free agency. Everybody's going to be on the wrong side of 30 and they had an agreement with Carlos Correa. They they were they offered Judge what he took from the Yankees. They offered Shohei Otani what he took from the Dodgers. So like you can't really you replace Zaidi with someone else and that's not going to change. Like I hate to break it to you, but that's not been the problem. The problem has been you know, you could say like a lot of the handling of younger players and the up and the down uh, to the minor leagues and all that. Um, and you can say mostly, though, that they just haven't drafted and developed like enough impact talent in six years, six full seasons of this. Um, so anyway, coming up in just a minute, we'll turn our attention to one of the big successes of Farhan Zaidi's tenure here. We'll also like explore the case that he should be fired. I just kind of made the case as to bringing in someone else won't change much. But Matt Chapman, in you know, ringing success, and they did get an extension done. No matter how it was done, they did get an extension done. We'll get into him and the Willie Mack Award in just a minute. And before we do, today's episode of Locked On Giants is brought to you in part. By Robinhood. With Robinhood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Robinhood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually usually reserved for high society. Now, the resourceful individual with Robinhood Gold can earn the very liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash, receive unlimited 1% deposit bonuses, and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up at Robinhood.com gold. Terms apply. For product-specific disclosures, visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing uh, involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. All right. As promised, we're going to get into the other side of the coin, which is, you know, I'm not going to like make the case that Farhan Zaidi should be fired. I kind of just did mention some of the reasons why it would be which are, you know, the handling of some young players and 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 some of, you know, the 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 records, <laughs> the records are ultimately ultimately what it comes down to. And as I said later, the Giants have a chance to do the most appropriate thing possible tomorrow. So we'll get into that later as well. But how about Matt Chapman? Thanks again for making Lockdown Giants your first listen every day. Every day is on Monday, we'll be breaking down the Giants season being over. And kind of just immediate reaction. Hopefully by that point, there's clarity on Farhan Zaidi and like a statement released by the Giants. And that'll be a huge focus of our conversation. Um, So I look forward to that on Monday. I don't look forward to the season being over. It went by in like super fast for me, which in some ways, like this team didn't aggravate me as much as some of the teams of years past. And, And that's a good thing. And I think it had to do more with the change in uh, manager and just the way that they played. But also, I think the way that they played was a reflection of Zaidi himself um, for the first five years of his tenure. And choosing Gabe Kapler as the replacement for Bochi, and then the way Kapler managed and the way Kapler kind of was as a person. I'm not trying to take shots at Gabe Kapler as a person, but like it was a strange personality. And so that's, that's kind of, um, it wasn't a popular hire, right? Let's just say that. And again, I'm not Kapler. He seemed like a good guy, but he was also like, just, I guess I would say not really a fit for what this fan base kind of was looking for and nor was the style of play. And so that's another negative for Zaidi because he made that decision. Like he's got to live with it. Um, it was a risky hire, uh, polarizing hire, and it didn't work out. But Zaidi got his, you know, he didn't lose his job. And then they went out and had a pretty big offseason. And 
the expectation and hope was that they would have a good season and that and that things could continue on a better path under Bob Melvin. But it ultimately hasn't worked out that way as they had a disappointing season among teams with playoff aspirations. But one player who did not disappoint, you know, Blake Snell too, but also Matt Chapman. I mean, and then they get this extension done. So Chapman came into today's game in which he went, you know, he hit a couple more doubles, two for four with two doubles, gives him 39 on the season. So um, I don't have the leader the leaderboard on doubles pulled up in front of me, but I'm actually doing it quickly here. Uh, 39 doubles currently, like entering the day, Chapman was 12th or tied for 11th, I should say, with 37 doubles. And then, you know, these stats aren't updated right now, but 39 coming into Saturday's game would be 8th, tied with Francisco Lindor. So that's a lot of doubles. He's also hit uh, 27 homers, 2 triples. A little surprised he doesn't have more triples, honestly, with his speed and the ballpark. But it's just it, it was a really good season for Chapman uh, coming into Saturday when he had another good game, like I said, uh, he he was at 5.3 fan graphs wins above replacement easily besting the Giants and in terms of all players in all position players in Major League Baseball that uh, was tied with Jordan Alvarez for 13th in baseball and if you look at just the National League that is uh, where he disappeared no he's sixth that would be sixth in all of the National League, ahead of Bryce Harper by a little bit. Harper getting knocked for providing less defensive value now that he's moved to first base full-time. So Harper's been a better hitter, but Chapman's been a better base runner and defender and plays a more premium defensive position. And so, you know, the fact that they got the extension done, I'm scared for the second half of it. You know, he's going to be 30 just to, I want to just be sure of what I'm about to say. He's going to be 32 on April 28th. So, and that's year one of a six-year contract. So that scares me. But, um, you know, one contract that might not be great at the back end isn't going to destroy a franchise. It's just if you got a bunch of them, it can create a problem down the road. But, you know, you do have probably three more really solid years of Matt Chapman, but you do expect age-related decline as that thing goes on. But he wins the Willie Mack Award, and there's, there's it's always a special uh, award. You know, last year it was Tyro Estrada, so it goes to show you it doesn't necessarily mean success is coming the following year. Um, so active players who have won the award include Mike Yastrzemski in 2020, Lamont Wade Jr. in 2021, Wilmer Flores in 2022, and... And when I say active, I mean active members of the organization. Flores, you know, he does have a th- very cheap player option for next year that will likely be picked up. He was injured this year, so don't judge the performance too bad. And then Tyro Estrada won it in 2023. And so for Chapman, he said it means a lot on winning the award. He said, I think the more and more I learn about it, the more I see the significance of this award and how important it is to the organization. Obviously, I was super excited. It's just been a cherry on top of a great month. Obviously, it would be better if we were going to the playoffs. That's my goal. I'm going to work this offseason to make that possible next year. But besides not making the playoffs, it's been a great month with my daughter and the contract and getting this award. I've just been blessed. So yeah, he signed this six-year, $151 million extension, which if you add it to what he earned this year, it comes out to a better contract than he could have expected last offseason at like peak value. So he really did, he and Scott Boris really do deserve credit for ultimately getting him what he got, um, which comes out to ultimately a seven-year deal worth about $170 million. Um, so that's pretty nice uh, for him. But he is like an underrated player, I would say. When I'm talking about these numbers, I don't think necessarily everyone thinks of Matt Chapman as a top five player in the league, the National League, top 10 in baseball. And baseball reference, by the way, if you're looking there, you might be wondering, um, you know, what? He's second in wins above replacement. Well, that would be baseball reference because they use a different measure 
for defense, different metric than Fangraphs. Fangraphs uses more of the stat cast stuff, and um, Baseball Reference uses defensive runs saved, and those are different, and so you're going to get different results. And just an example of how war is just an estimate. It's not a precise number, but clearly, you know, when you combine everything that Chapman does plus the intangibles uh, off the charts, right, just really good, just above average across the board, and including like the intangibles and then so then he gets the contract he has a daughter and then he wins the willie mack award so um let's see the Giants surprised chapman by playing a special video message from taylor uh his wife who cradled baby gia in her arms and said we just want to say that we're so proud of you you're the hardest working person i know and you're you're always showing up for everyone in your life. You're such an inspiration on and off the field. So that's that's pretty telling. I mean, because we see it on the field, but to see it, to, see, to hear her say, you're the hardest working person I know, and you're always showing up for everyone in your life. I mean, it's just, you know, a testament to that he's not, he is who he appears to be. Uh, it's not just who he is on the field. And he's not just hardworking on the field. Um, and then Chapman said uh, of this season, basically, I think a year of building relationships with these guys, they probably are more comfortable with each other. Um, we got, we've got, we got more respect for each other. We've been through it together. So now I think some of the things that we had to kind of go through this year, we don't have to necessarily go through as much of that next year. And now we can take it to another level. I don't know exactly how it's all going to work out, but I know that I'm going to be here for a long time and I can really sink my teeth into trying to bring the best out of this team. So that's what, what I appreciate about, and he was kind of talking about the core of young position players that have graduated onto the major league roster there. And that's kind of what I appreciate about Chapman is it's not just about him at all. Like for him, it's about the team and being someone who can hopefully recruit. He did say he had, he immediately got texts from other players around the league saying they wanted to play with him after he signed this long-term deal here. So hopefully that does work out. They, you know, Farhan Zaidi, when he hired Bob Melvin last off season mentioned, or before hiring Melvin mentioned that they wanted someone who would be an effective recruiter, which was part of, I talked about Kapler's personality. I'm not sure there were that many players out there who were too thrilled and wanting to play for Gabe Kapler. No offense, again. But Melvin, I think, is is better in that regard, and it did pan out that way. They they got Chapman. I think Melvin had a lot to do with that. Chap, Melvin's like one of Chapman's favorite guys and probably his favorite manager he's, he's ever played for. I'm sure his favorite manager he's ever played for. I think one of just two or at most three if the Blue Jays made a change while Chapman was there. Managers that he's ever played for. Um and I lost my train of thought, but, um, oh, recruiting. Uh, and then Jung Hoo Lee, I think, had something to do with, with Bob Melvin as well because uh, Ha Sung Kim, best friends with Jung Hoo Lee, played for Bob Melvin in San Diego. And so I do think that's one thing too, though, is like if Farhan Zaidi goes, what does that mean about Bob Melvin? And Melvin's out here talking in press conferences like after the game on Saturday today that like talking about next year and like what what we have to do next year so that and he said he he wanted his contract to sync up with Farhan Zaidi so that I kind of lean towards they're not going to make a change but I don't know I'm just I'm just a podcaster I'm just going to tell it analyze it when it happens whatever the Giants decide to do but one thing we do know is that tomorrow the Giants have the chance to do to do the most appropriate thing ever for this up and down, but most like just purely up and down. Like there's no, not too high, not too low, but just right in the middle. And they have the chance to do the most appropriate thing ever. We'll get into it in just a minute. And before we do. Today's episode of Lockdown Giants is brought to you in part by Booking.com, Booking.com, Booking. Yeah, explore those U.S. cities you always secretly wanted to learn more about. With hotels, bed and breakfasts, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on Booking.com, you might just find your perfect stay, even in your baseball 
rivals city during the postseason. Maybe it's time to taste test your baseball competition's stadium cuisine. Luckily, on Booking.com, you can find the stadium stay that's just right for you. With Booking.com's wide variety of choice across the U.S., you can go incognito to your baseball rival cities. I did that. I literally went to Dodger Stadium for postseason games one year. Not this year, but I am currently in another city where I plan on attending some postseason games. So Booking.com delivers exactly the right U.S. stay for you. No matter what team you're rooting for this postseason, Booking.com can make you a fan of any U.S. city. From hotels that look over stadiums to family-friendly resorts to cute bed and breakfast stays, Booking.com has so many choices across the U.S. The right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your baseball rivals. Booking.com, Booking.yeah. Today's episode is also brought to you in part by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps, on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get action on sports in most states, including the great state of California and Texas and Georgia. So I, as you know, I've showed you my phone many times, have played Prize Picks this season and just had a blast every single moment. It is a ton of fun. Definitely the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code all lowercase locked on MLB. And get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code locked on MLB on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks run your game. All right, here we go. We are going to get into how the Giants have the chance to do the most appropriate thing they could possibly do in 2024, and that is finish exactly at 500 again thanks again for making lockdown giants your first listen every day every dayers on monday we are going to be breaking down the season being over like i'm sad i mean they, while it was a frustrating season ultimately say that say they're able to win tomorrow let's just say and they're, they're 81 and 81 say you know yeah a lot of these wins have come at the end they did have that seven and two road trip they had another hot streak in the season at one point, but for the most part, they've just been around 500 all year long. They've often fallen several, like six-ish, six, seven games below and then come back and then gone back down. But ultimately, I think 500 is definitely the most appropriate finish this team can have, and it would be fitting for this era led by Farhan Zaidi because that's been the thing. Like I keep saying, it's not been that they've been bad. They've just been too mid. They've just been stuck in the middle. And so a 500 record for the what would be the second time under his watch when they had never done it before would just be kind of ironic and appropriate. And, um, you know, I, I also, like, want my team to succeed like even if they're out of the playoffs like I always want the Giants to win I've said this recently but maybe the one exception was 2017 in the final game when if they lost they would have the number one pick in the draft and they won and got the number two pick in the draft and that led to Joey Bart they probably would have taken Casey Mize it hasn't it's not been like Mize has been much of more of a difference maker than Bart by the way congratulations to the Tigers that's a random thought but they wanted this miracle run they had like basically 0% odds, according to fan graphs, of making the playoffs not long ago. And then they just went like 31-11 and 11 or something in their last 42 games, and, and they're in. And so Scott Harris, former GM of the Giants, leading that city and organization to its first playoff appearance in a long time. They had the longest playoff drought going. So congrats to them. But anyway, I'm going to look like, I guess... Uh, the Red Sox and Rays are playing each other tomorrow, and they're both 80 and 81 as well, um, and as are the Giants. 
And so one of those teams is going to lose, obviously. So one of them will be 81 and 81, and one of them will be 80 and 82. And I don't know how exactly it works if you have the same record. So they'll be tied with one of those two teams. I just, the odd, like the way it matters for draft position, you're going to be up or down like a spot maybe and you're also in the draft lottery so you could be in the top six or however it is however many spots are in that draft lottery so i just don't lose sleep over i I certainly never am sitting there rooting for my team to lose except i guess like i said that one time in 2017 it was such a bad year anyway it was like either you're gonna lose 98 or you're gonna lose what they lost 98 right oh so i guess or 99 uh, because they did win that final game, giving them the number two overall pick. But anyway, it you know whether they win or lose doesn't make a huge difference regarding draft position. We also won't know their draft position until the draft lottery happens. And when all is said and done, I just think 81 and 81 looks a lot better than 80 and 82. I just think it, it it's one game difference. Right now, the Giants' run differential is minus one which is exactly appropriate and how fitting would it be if they have a one run win and finish at 81 and 81 with a zero run differential scoring exactly as many runs as they allowed on the season that would be wild and it would just be the most appropriate thing ever would it not i just feel like that would be the most appropriate thing ever and so they have a chance to do it and it's going to be hayden birdsong on the mound for the giants against who's going for the cardinals uh I don't know. Michael McGreevy is going for the Cardinals. This is his rookie campaign. He's pitched 15 innings. So I don't know if he's more of a short kind of stint guy pulling up his numbers right now. He's made, he's appeared in three games, two starts, 15 innings, and kind of crazy ground ball numbers in the majors so far this year 66.7% with an average launch angle against him of minus 4.4 degrees. So not a ton of strikeouts, which means he'll probably strike out 11 or like eight in four innings or something. But at the end of the day, uh, he's put up good numbers um, for the Cardinals this year, and that's who the Giants will be facing. As we know, Birdsong has been up and down. Like he's been good, he's been bad. I mean, he's kind of been both. So McGreevy pitched seven innings in his debut, and it was seven seven innings one run the three strikeouts and then he didn't start and went three innings no runs against the pirates and then at the rockies went five innings allowed three runs um and but that's in denver which is a tough place to pitch so mcgreevy's been pretty darn good uh for the cardinals but um you know fangraphs had him coming into the year as their 21st ranked prospect not the 21st in baseball but for the cardinals so kind of pitching better than expected at this point and we'll see if the giants can get to him in this last start and and i hope you know because you can say you otherwise it's like what's at stake it's either a quote-unquote losing season or a 500 season they're not going to have a winning season but they could have a losing season or they could not based on this one game and then we'll know the fate of farhan zaidi so just i don't know I'll certainly be rooting for the Giants. Some of you weirdos, just kidding. But I, I just don't get the point of not rooting for the team that I root for. But anyway, that's what's at stake going into this final game. And then, of course, we'll have full season recaps and all that, looking at all the numbers once everything's wrapped up. So that's all coming up later in, in the week. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Every day, or like I said, on Monday, it's going to be largely about what what kind of statement the Giants release? Do they fire Farhan Zaidi? Uh, we'll be waiting for that. Uh, hopefully they deliver that in time for a normal hour show on Monday. Uh, for your second listen, find Locked on MLB. Prepare for the Fall Classic with Sully, who has it all covered every single day. Find Locked on MLB on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspic. Check me out on Twitter or X at Ben Kaspic, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. Helps me out a lot, so thank you in advance, and thanks to everyone who's done so already. I cannot wait to be with you again on Monday. I'll be very sad the season is over, but I can't wait to be with you anyway. So thanks again for listening. We'll see what happens. You are now Locked on Giants.